What's up, people? I'm one of your hosts, Phoenix. And I am your other host, Titan. And welcome to Guess Who's Back. Back again. Well, we were supposed to be back since, well, yeah, we're here. We're just late. In today's video, we are going to be discussing augmented reality and virtual reality and how it would be a huge part of society. Firstly, I want to acknowledge that this video is coming out way later than we anticipated, a month later in fact, but hey, here we are now, so let's get right into it. With movies like Ready Player One becoming the future, it's important to note the reality part of it. Do I think that everyone will be inside of a VR game 24-7? Absolutely not. I do see that mixed reality with AR and VR tech like the Apple Vision Pros or the Quest 3 that AR specifically will have a bigger impact on society as a whole rather than a metaverse. AR specifically will have a huge impact on how we go about daily life and I'm truly excited to see the future of AR. But let's switch gears. While I don't think that every person and their dog will be in a virtual reality game living life that way, I do think that VR has already had a major impact on the gaming industry. A very niche one but gaining traction and popularity as technology increases. I originally bought the Oculus Go, which was the cheapest VR that was on the market at the time. If I remember, it was around $199 at the time. When I got it home, I got it set up and started playing a horror game. Within an hour, I had fallen in love with it. In fact, I loved it so much that I returned it and then upgraded to the Oculus Quest, which was about $399 at the time. But absolutely worth the money. Unfortunately now, it's no longer supported and I can't really play anything. I really have wanted to upgrade to the Quest 3. I know how much I love playing games like The Walking Dead, Blade and Sorcery, and even Skyrim VR. Now there are so many different games available, and we have heptic suits and gloves. Playing Skyrim again, but actually being there, was an experience that was so beautiful I almost cried. Okay, maybe I cried a little. It was truly a different feeling. It was everything that I hoped it would be. Now mind you, this was still the Oculus Quest 1, and that was streaming from my laptop. It's probably half the quality that it would be on the Quest 3. Then there are games like Star Wars, where you actually fight Darth Vader. It was so cool. It made my childhood come to life. I personally think that gaming in VR is so much better, and I would absolutely prefer to play in virtual reality. My personal complaint, and I believe it's a complaint for a lot of people, it's inconvenient. I have thrown a grenade in a game and end up smashing my hand on a wall. That hurts. It also feels like a chore sometimes. If I wasn't really in the mood to play, I never picked it up. I felt like I got my money's worth 100%. But the Quest didn't have that many games at the time. Most of the games were being developed for the Oculus Rift S, which was the superior version but required a constant connection to the computer, unlike the Quest. This allowed them to use the computer's processor to process the graphics for the Rift, for better looking visuals. Really, I always seem to buy things right as they go out of date. <coughs> Steam Deck. I think with major improvements over time and the MetaQuest 3's incorporation of augmented reality adds more accessibility which allows you to safely walk around your house and still have those fun interactions and AR games. VR is more immersive and exciting and I think that we will start seeing VR arcades becoming more popular. I think games like Laser Tag will eventually switch over to a VR experience. While I think the VR specifically will always be a niche thing, I think that having mixed reality as an option will allow people to use AR to play games and watch movies on a huge screen in front of you, and will allow people to switch to VR when they are in a safe environment to enjoy a more immersive experience. I have seriously debated buying the Quest 3 to try out mixed reality firsthand. I mean, I don't know anyone who doesn't want an Apple Vision Pro, but for 4000 I'd rather just imagine that I'm playing the game instead. I love new and refined technologies like VR, which isn't new, but definitely refined. I have always, since the 80s, loved the experience of being in VR. But I think that's always going to be the issue, at least for the foreseeable future, that unlike console and PC gaming, VR and AR is an experience, no more, no less. Let me explain. 
VR used to be something that you had to go to an arcade or a large mall to experience in this very large contraption that either looks like the seat from Ready Player One or a giant dome with rings around it. In the last 10 years, VR has come home for players and aficionados to try out and enjoy. Titan did a great job of explaining some of the inherent issues, but let me recap and add some to it. Space is an issue. Even with object detection, you can easily cause injury or destroy something in your house or apartment. The gear can be heavy and fatiguing, as you've seen early adopters of the Apple Vision Pro return their devices for this very reason. The tech gets outdated and after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, you can see it phased out like the Quest 1 or not supported like the PSVR 1. Last and what I believe to be most important is the fact that as cool as the concept is that you could walk around in a virtual reality space and do and see these cool things, most people will want to just sit down and relax and enjoy their media. This was evident when the Nintendo Wii first arrived, one of the highest selling consoles of all time with the lowest gaming attachment rate. Why? Because it was only brought out during parties and family gatherings. Didn't stop Wii Sports from being one of the best party games of all times, but what it meant was the Wii collected dust except for three to four times a year. VR is in that space. As Titan stated, it is very niche, and yes, it is definitely picking up popularity as one of the barriers price is starting to come into range. As Quest 3 was released, the Quest 2 price tag was dropped, and I have spoken to families and neighbors who've run out to get their own for that experience. As I said, it is an experience, and one that I believe everyone should try out. Again, I don't think it's going to be a big part of our daily lives until these issues are resolved. The Apple Vision Pro solved one of the issues, as you can sit down and interact with a ton of applications using just your headset with amazing eye tracking. The issue? It still hasn't solved the other issues. The headset is huge and heavy as most reviewers have talked about not being able to keep it on for long periods, and the price point is over 4K. So that isn't tech that's going to be prevalent in most households. iPhone fans, I know what you're thinking and you know better. Once they come out with version two and three, you'll go and grab the discounted original, but you already know what happens to older Apple devices. Once the new one comes out, they will send a patch that will nerf the battery and the performance. So don't waste your time, don't waste your money. AR is something I was hoping would kick off hard. I mean, who wouldn't want to wear glasses or have a windshield in their car with real light HUD like Iron Man? I thought maybe when Nintendo 3DS hit with all the cool AR stuff, then maybe it would get rolling. Much like VR, it's an experience and nobody really engaged with it on a normal basis. It was a fun novelty, but nothing more. Unlike Marvel's Iron Man, we don't have the technology to interact with AR in a seamless space and especially not for the price point that it would be. Speaking on both, from a purely gaming perspective, there is nothing else like experiencing your favorite game in VR or AR. It is amazing and completely changes how you interact with the virtual world you are in. If you have a chance, I highly recommend that you try it out. I don't know if the technology will ever get to the point where you can safely play VR at a decent price point with lighter gear or without running headfirst into a wall. I can't say, but until you can, this will always be just an accessory to what was never broken, and that is you sitting in your favorite chair with your favorite controller on the big screen. All right, folks, well, that wraps up this video for today. So if you're a fan of VR and AR, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already, and join us for our next video. We'll be there. You be, be there. there.